Hey everybody and welcome back to Super Comic Fun Time. It is still July 12th, 2018 and we are going to get into issue 6 of John Byrne and Dick Giordano's The Man of Steel. This is issue number 6 and it's titled Return to Smallville, The Epic Conclusion. So after this transition, we will look at the book. Okay, and welcome back. <clears throat> So here's the cover. Um, I like, you know, it's, hands are hard to draw. I, I draw a little bit. I'm nowhere near professional quality, but I kind of like this, um, the posing of the hand on this cover here. And it's another great cover. Uh, the covers for this series were consistent. They were great. They pretty much give you a summary. They're, they, they almost work like the... Uh, the teaser for a TV show like next week on Deep Space Nine or whatever. So we start the this issue with uh, Superman flying home and I have never noticed Superman grabbing his cape before like that. That is like so weird and cool at the same time. And he's headed home to, uh, oh let's look at the credits first. So here we go. John Byrne, Dick Giordano, Tom Zucchio colored, uh, John Costanza lettered, and it was edited by Andrew Helfer. So, I, I love this opening shot, Superman returning home. This issue takes place about 10 years after Superman first left home. So he's like visiting um, stuff and uh, he comes to the bus station and the bus is just arriving and he uses his super speed to blend in with the passengers coming off the bus. And then there's Ma and Pa Kent. Clark, you who over here, son. So they have a nice reunion. And they head back to the house and um, they talk about Lois Lane a little bit. And, uh, you know, here it goes. Uh, unfortunately, since, uh, you know, they're, 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 uh, they're like saying, you know, uh, are you dating anybody? Uh, now I want to hear about this Lois Lane gal you've mentioned in every one of your letters. Oh, man. Um, uh, sweet on her son? Well, um, I don't think I was being so, I didn't think I was being so transparent, Pa. Yes, I do like Lois. I like her a lot. Unfortunately, since I beat her to her first uh, exclusive story on Superman, well, she hasn't exactly been Clark Kent's biggest fan. Oh, tish tosh, boy. How could any normal, healthy woman resist a big, huggy bear like you? You serious about this, Lois? You get after her, ma. But you're probably right. I've been contenting myself with her clear infatuation of Superman, but it's not enough. Superman isn't real. This is the part I really like here. Superman isn't real. He's just a fancy pair of long johns that let me operate in public without losing my private life. And that, and it's that private life that's incomplete without someone like Lois. Oh, I'm getting a tear. When I get back to Metropolis Tuesday morning, I'm going to have to do something about that. The reason I like this is because the movie Kill Bill, was it part two? Uh, David Carradine's character goes on about how, you know, Superman is Superman. He's always Superman. And Clark Kent is a disguise. But here in John Byrne's book, which was, I don't know, 20 years or so prior to Kill Bill, we, uh, we get this heartfelt thing. It's like Superman... Well, at this point, he's, he doesn't even know he's an alien. He's first and foremost a human being. He's first and foremost Clark Kent. Superman is a disguise, just like every other superhero, to protect the loved ones. So, I, yeah, I really was touched when I read this the first time, and I was touched again when I just read it to you. So then we go, you know, Superman's in bed, and it's like he doesn't need to sleep, and he can't sleep anyway, so he gets up. He's going to raid the ice box when da, 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 um, his da shows up, his real da. And only 
only uh, Superman doesn't know it's his doll. So, uh, this is like, uh, yeah, look, the pie is just falling out of the pan. Um, and like, I like, I like the smile on jor face. It's like, what? Who are you? I see you, I hear you, but my super senses don't detect anything but empty air. And then like, um, jor is speaking in this uh, glyph language. I can't understand. Uh, I can't understand you. What do you want here? What are you going to? And then like he waves his hand. Do. And then Superman has this totally psychedelic experience. And like the interesting thing here is he's back on Krypton and I am not sure if like they have some time travel technology. I wasn't quite clear on this, um, but there's uh, Jor-El and uh, Lara, and um, they can see him. And I think she recognizes, yeah, she recognizes Clark as well, Superman, as her son. It's like Jor-El. That name, what does it mean? Who are you? No, you are not Jorel. Yet I see him in you, your eyes, the shape of your mouth. Yes, you are my son. You're my son. And then we get the transition into Lana Lang. And so, like, I don't remember, you know, Lana Lang was in the first issue. It's like Clark is supposed to take her to the malt shop after he wins the, uh, the football game basically by himself. But that's all we really see of her. And so it's like she just shows up like he's running in the fields and stuff in his uh, sort of hallucination. I don't. You know, I, I don't really remember what's going on there, but, uh, oh yeah, uh, I kind of missed this part too, but in the early part of this story, he makes reference to, uh, and I probably can't find it, I can never find it when I want to go back, but he makes reference to the Fortress of Solitude about Smallville being his Fortress of Solitude, and uh, true to form, I, I can't find it. Um, so, so yeah, it's like, uh, Clark is having this freak out. Uh, that was like another thing is like uh, Pa Kent here is like he almost like spills it out that Lana is back in town, which from our perspective, we you know, this, just this six issue series, we don't know that she's left, I don't think. We don't really know anything about the history of uh, Superman and Lana to this book. And then it's like, um, tell me what it's all about. I, I don't know, Lana. I, I can't think of any way to put it into words. It was uh, a nightmare, insanity. But Lana, what are you doing here? Ma and Pa told me you left Smallville years ago. Left, yes. I did leave. I left for a long time. I had to leave. After what you did to me, to my life, And like Clark is totally like dismayed. He, he doesn't know what he's done. Did to you? I don't. It's all right, Clark. I don't expect you to understand. Not right away. But maybe if you could remember. Remember 10 years ago. I was getting ready for the victory sock hop after the big win against Compton High. The game you won almost single-handed. Lana, you have a visitor. Thanks, Aunt Helen. Clark, what's the matter? Lana, I, we need to talk. You look awful. We took a long stroll out under the big autumn moon with the full air, with the air full of scent of dry leaves and hay. We'd been best friends forever by then, Clark. More than friends, I confess, there is, there in the moonlight, on such a romantic night, I half expected you to propose. 
He asked me to marry you, but you didn't. Instead, you talked to me about the world, the bad things happening outside of Smallville, war, famine, crime. And one man can make a difference, Lana, if he's the right man. And I think maybe I was meant to be that man. You, but Clark, I mean, you're a terrific athlete and smart as a whip, but what can you do? Lots of things, Lana. Things maybe nobody else on earth can do. But the best way I can show you, Clark, is if I just show you. You showed me all right. Showed me something I'd only read about, dreamed about. Clark! Oh, and look, there was a Wonder Woman book by George Perez. I, I need to get that. Get a little mini, mini ad for it here. It looks beautiful. George Perez is a great artist. Oh, now there's a helicopter going through, so it's pretty much okay if we linger on this, uh, this page for a little bit. So yeah, very cool insert. And the helicopter's gone. So then like, yeah, I don't know what Clark was thinking. Like, okay, we flew around the world that night. They flew around the freaking world. It was a dream, a beautiful, magical dream come true. You know, I just watched In Bruges, or In Bruges, great movie. That was a dream too. A dream that would turn into a nightmare. You took me back home, you said, a long goodbye. Goodbye to me, to Smallville. You kissed me like a brother kissing a sister, and you were gone. Gone from the front porch of my aunt's house. Gone from Smallville. Gone from my life. And everything good was gone with you. Lana, I still don't understand. Please stop saying that, Clark. I know you don't. I know you didn't mean to do what you did. You wanted to share a strange and wonderful secret with me, your oldest and closest friend. Instead, you tore open the seams of my life and left me empty, Clark. You opened the door to me, Clark, the door that leads into the whole universe, and then you closed it again. Forever. Because I realized as I flew off into that dawn a decade ago, I realized you could never be mine. All my life, I've loved you. I'd loved you, Clark. But in that moment, that morning, you were taken from me. Because you can never belong to one woman, Clark. You're Superman. And Superman belongs to the world. Lana! I didn't know. I'm sorry. Very, very sorry. If there's anything I can do to make it up to you. No, Clark. For a while, I hated you. When Superman first appeared, I thought about revealing your secret, but eventually I came to realize that you meant well. For a lot of years, I followed you. I followed Superman, just wanting, just watching, hoping, dreaming. Then I came back to Smallville, back to the house I grew up in, fallen into a bad repair since Aunt Helen passed on, but an anchor, a piece of my old life. I asked your mom and pa not to tell you I was back. What had, what had happened? Oh, not to tell you what would happen. Your ma understood. I don't think your pa ever will. I'm happy now, Clark. Not as happy as I might have been if you were just an ordinary man and we raised about a dozen ordinary kids. But happy in my own way, knowing your secret. Knowing you told me what you told me. 
showed me what you showed me out of love. And then look at that art. You showed me out of love, out of love, love. The slowest lane gal, sweet on her. Life's incomplete without someone like Lois. You can never belong to one woman, Clark. Lois. Superman belongs to the entire world. To the world. But which world? All these years I skirted that question. Who am I? Where did I come from? Ma and Pa found me 28 years ago. Found me in this field, in a rocket ship, kept hidden from the world. This rocket. Oh my God. It's gone. Did Pa move it and did not tell me? But why? Why would he do that? Wait, too much is happening all at once. Gotta pull my thoughts together. My super senses reveal a large vehicle pulled up to this site within the last six months. If the trail is fresh enough, I should be able to follow it. Backtrack whoever took the rocket. But whoever it is, if it isn't Pa, they may have already learned more about me than even I know my... My son, you again. And this time I can understand you. So hold right there, friend. I don't know what was in that zap you hit me with before, but you better have some pretty good answers. My son, be silent and learn. Isn't that a truth? Be silent and learn. It's happening again. My mind is exploding with a million alien images. I can't resist. Isn't it interesting how Superman's own memories are, are alien to him? Feeling everything slipping away, my mind, my humanity. Hurry, Jonathan. I saw him fly towards this field after Lana called. He's got to be just over the ridge. I'm driving as fast as I dare, Martha. This old bucket of ain't no dune buggy, you know. I can't. Look, Clark. Pa, stay back. Don't get near him. And like, Pa, in paternal instinct, grabs a shovel to defend his son. That, that ghost, what is it? It's hurting Clark. Stay in the truck, Martha, and be ready to drive for help if we need it. Now you get away from my boy. Get away. Pa? Pa, are you all right? <laughs> well, my shovel's seen better days. Who? What was that thing? I'm not sure. My best guess is some kind of self-powered holographic projection. Whatever it was, it was vastly more sophisticated than anything modern Earth science could produce. Your metal shovel blade must have shorted it out somehow. The old metal shovel blade shorting out the hologram trick. And then, like, you know, they ask him if he's okay and stuff, and he goes, I've got to think. And so he flies off, and he's, like, realizing that Earth is in his home, and that he's learned the planet Krypton was his home, a planet billions and billions of miles out in space, beyond the solar system. How far? I can't even guess. A planet that died in a terrible, fiery holocaust that shattered the world and left only one survivor, me. That was the message of jor -El. And Lara, I am the sole survivor of that doomed planet, Krypton. But what does it mean, but what does it all mean to me, to my life? For 28 years, I've lived as an Earth man, as a human being. I've developed I've developed these fantastic powers, but I never suspected it was because of my alien origin. I simply thought I was some kind of, I don't know, some kind of mutant. 
Now, all that's gone. The message of Jor-El is clear. My birthright lies in the stars. It's not the blood of Homo sapiens that flows in my veins. It is the blood of a million generations of the planet Krypton. All that world's history is now within my memory, placed there in the last act of my real father. I can quote from the great literature of Krypton's ancient culture. I can summon before my mind's eye the great works of art. I can even speak the seven languages of Krypton's proudest epochs. I can sing ballads of its heroes. I know the name of, Krypton's, of all of Krypton's gods and all the prayers that praised his name. All this is the last gift of Jor-El to his son. And all of it is ultimately meaningless. I may have been conceived out there in the endless depths of space, but I was born when the rocket ship opened on Earth in America. I'll cherish always the memories Jor-El and Lara gave me, but only as curious mementos of a life that might have been. Krypton bred me, but it was Earth that gave me all I am, all that matters. It was Krypton that made me Superman, but it was Earth that makes me human. Oh, what a great series. What a great way to end it. And of course, this all continues on in, uh, in John Byrne's regular Superman gig. I don't think it says so here. But, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what happened. So, oh, that was, that was good. Um, you know, I, I don't know what, I don't even want to talk about the current series. Um, so, yeah, did you read this back in the day? I, I think it's fantastic. So, um, anyways, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to thank you. For watching this video please give it a like um, this week I haven't been reading too much I started reading the invasion books and they, those are some dense books I I haven't been reading them every day I haven't been reading them every day but I'm in the third chapter of the first book and it's really good storytelling really good writing I'm really enjoying it so far so I'll cover those um, I'll cover that first issue once I finish it uh, probably tomorrow so again, thank you for watching and give me the like. If you like, give me a thumbs down if you don't like and comment down below. Super Comic Fun Time out.